Hello everybody and welcome back to our farm. As you may remember, on our farm we're always trying to reduce the TEM, T-E-M. That is the time, effort, and the money involved in our activities. However, the topic of this video has a slight twist to it in that we're not reducing our TEM as much as we're helping the bees to reduce theirs. Perhaps the best way to explain the topic of today's video is to explain the problem. So let's jump right into it. It's been estimated that it takes anywhere from six to perhaps even eight pounds of honey to produce just one pound of wax. Thus it costs the bees a lot in time, effort, and honey to produce wax. With this in mind, one problem with beekeeping is that a lot of wax is removed from the hive during the harvesting of honey, or when removing old worn out comb, spur, or bridge comb, which represents a huge loss of energy and this honey to the hive. So, why not just put the wax back into the hive? Problem solved. Unfortunately, it's been reported that if you put wax in a hive, the bees just build comb on top of it without using the wax. It appears, therefore, that bees simply don't have an instinct to reuse the wax. Or maybe they do, but you have to present it to them in a certain way that nobody has found yet. Whatever the case, we thought it would be both fun and useful to see if we could figure out how to solve this problem. I would like to say that we had this great solution in mind, but in actuality, we really had absolutely no idea in which direction to proceed. So we just did basic science. We started with a very basic experiment, and then we used the results of this experiment to design the next, and so on. So uh, let's take a look at these experiments and where they led us to. We started our experimental journey by placing a small block of wax in a hive. However, like others before us have reported, we found that the bees completely ignored it and just built comb on top of it. Thus, thinking that the wax was simply unattractive to the bees because it was too thick and bulky, we did a large number of experiments with thin wax strips. Although it's an interesting story of how each successive experiment brought us closer to a solution, it would take too long to tell this story chapter by chapter. So it suffices to say that our experiments involved different widths of wax strips between one and four centimeters, which were placed in different orientations relative to the frame, and at times colored green so we could better see if the wax was being built on or used to make new comb. And these are the main results. Number one, placing the strips vertically on the frame caused the bees to build out from each strip into the space between frames, creating both bridge comb and a big mess. Number two, placing the strips horizontally resulted in bees actually using the wax strips to build new comb and to build the comb properly along the frame and not out into space between frames. So surprise, surprise, it is possible to get bees to build comb with old wax introduced into the hive. Number three. So yes, we had success. However, it was common that 50% or more of the strip would be unused and just built on by the bees, resulting in misshapen cells. The success with the strips was partial, unpredictable, low quality, and therefore, unfortunately, unacceptable. Number four, it is also interesting to note that if there was a small pinhole in the wax, the bees would at times clean it out, exposing the plastic cell underneath it. Unfortunately, when we introduced strips with many holes of various sizes, the holes did not generally induce the bees to use the wax. Number five, lastly, almost all the edges of the wax strips were commonly nibbled on, exposing the plastic cells beneath them. However, if you look closely, you'll see that these edges were nibbled on such that the cells were either fully exposed or fully covered, but never partially open. Now, it was this last point that caused the proverbial light bulb to turn on over our heads. It finally dawned on us that bees clearly are not genetically programmed to reuse wax, but they are programmed to fix improperly made cells by removing the bits of wax strip that partially cover a cell and then use this wax to make new comb. So with this in mind, 
both our experimental thinking and objective totally switch from determining how to encourage or trigger bees to reuse wax to discovering the best way to place wax on the frame so that the bees see the wax as being part of a malformed cell. And as we just said, perhaps the best way of making a cell appear malformed is to partially cover the opening of the cell with wax strips. In this regard, there are two ways to place wax strips horizontally on a plastic frame so that the wax only partially covers a cell. The first one is to make the wax strips narrower than the cell. The second is to make the wax strips wider, but still narrow enough so that when placed between two rows of cells, they never fully cover a cell. Okay, let's look at an example of how these strips performed. We can see that there are strips that partially cover a row of cells and are separated by a row of cells without wax. We also have the same strips, but that are crowded and not separated by a row of cells. And lastly, we have wider strips that partially cover two rows of cells and separated by a row of cells. And this is what the frame looked like after it was placed in a hive we see that the strips that covered a single row of cells with the rows separating them performed very well. But similar wax strips that were crowded and not separated by a row of cells have some cells that were built on the wax strip with several being deformed. The wider strips covering two rows of cells also performed very well. And yes, the bees did use the wax and not discard it from the hive. As you can tell by the green color wax on top of the cells of the yellow plastic frame. Okay, a few final thoughts. We have found that by placing a frame with wax strips into a, a new hive along with nine blank frames, bees would always choose the frame containing the wax strips to start building comb. Thus, when helping bees to quickly start building their colony, frames with wax strips may be a useful alternative to using frames with existing comb. Another consideration is that this method may be used to introduce the organic biopesticide BT, Bacillus thuringiensis, into the wax to control wax moss. BT is inactivated by the high temperatures of melted wax and inactivated quickly by environmental conditions if applied to the surface of the comb. However, it is conceivable that by coating the wax strips with BT, the insecticidal crystals will be quickly internalized and protected inside the wax, thus making the wax comb immune to damage by wax moss, much like the successful strategy adopted by BT corn and BT cotton. Now, is that cool or what? Lastly, one of the main reasons we're taking the considerable time required to do these videos is our desire to share our experience with others. Thus, we would be very grateful if you would help us by subscribing and clicking the like button so that YouTube and its algorithms will allow others to see this video. Well, that's it for now. Many thanks for taking the time to come visit with us and see you soon. Hey Tack, you busy? I thought we could maybe go for a walk. Well, we could go chase some rabbits. Well, we could go bark at Piggy. That's always fun. Hey, I just got a new farm video done. You want to go look at that? Smart dog.